Hi there, so here's the Mi QLED TV and I'd made an unboxing and initial impressions video about 10 days ago. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend you do. Links will be in the description. Now I know a lot of you are still confused. Is it worth spending that extra for a QLED TV? Well, let me share my experiences so that you can decide if you should buy this or not. But before we begin, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon so you never miss an update. Also follow me on my social media handles for more tech info. This is your friend texting. Let's get started. So before we jump into the review, here's a quick glance at the specifications. MediaTek 64-bit quad-core CPU, Mali G15 MP2 GPU, 4K DLED VA panel with a resolution of 3840 by 2160 pixels, 2 GB RAM and 32 GB internal storage, Dolby Vision and HDR10 support, MEMC chip, dual band Wi-Fi, 30 watt sound output with Dolby audio support, the patch wall experience and Android TV 10 OS. So design wise it's pretty good, metal frame with metal stands. Designed by Xiaomi is etched on the side of the TV. Extremely thin bezels, simple, clean and classy. Now the most often used ports like HDMI, USB and headphone jack are on the side and I'm also glad that the USB ports are separate and not the dual USB port. It's really convenient. Trust me, it's a pain trying to connect two USB cables or drives together on a dual USB port. Rest, the AV composite, antenna, optical and ethernet are behind but you can still access them from the side even if the TV is wall mounted. Also finally the optical audio makes a debut on the Mi TV replacing the coaxial speedif. Now I'm sure this is a small change but a big one for me and everyone who didn't have the coaxial speedif input. On the connectivity front the Mi QLED TV is pretty sorted. 3 HDMI ports, 2 separate USB ports, Ethernet, optical and even a 3.5 headphone jack which all the previous 55 inch Mi TVs lacked. It also has Bluetooth 5.0, so you can connect your favorite pair of Bluetooth wireless headphones super easily. It has dual band 2x2 MIMO Wi-Fi. MIMO stands for multiple input, multiple output. Without getting into the details, better response time with your Wi-Fi router and I did notice an improvement in performance. Definitely seem to have a better response time. Coming to the display. So this is a 4K V8 DLED panel with a resolution of 3840 by 2160 pixels. So this is Xiaomi's first QLED TV in India. For those who don't know what's a QLED TV, it's essentially an LED TV but with a quantum dot filter between the LED backlight and the LCD layer which helps produce better colors and brightness than regular LED TVs. Now Xiaomi got a lot of things right with it. The colors are definitely more punchier than ever before. but not to the extent of being oversaturated. If you prefer little more subtle colors, you can change it to the movie mode or to the sports mode in the picture settings. Frankly, for me the standard settings work just fine. Blacks are deep, almost pitch dark. What really impressed me about the panel is the uniformity of the backlight. Absolutely clean on the pure black screen with no light bleed at all. Since this is a VA panel, there is a slight shift in color when you sit at an angle of 30 to 35 degrees. Now this usually can be seen with all VA panels and probably something you won't even notice unless you're actually looking for it. Can you? Videos run smoothly thanks to the MEMC chip. Now MEMC is a mixed bag. Sometimes it works flawlessly, sometimes it's invisible. The idea of MEMC is to reduce motion blur to make videos look buttery smooth by adding frames in between videos below 60 fps. Ideally, this is to be switched on for sports content and yes, it looks absolutely fabulous. When watching movies, I suggest you keep the motion smoothing to clear. It's smooth but not over smoothed. Overall, my viewing experience on the Mi QLED TV was really satisfying. I streamed most of the popular OTT apps, Netflix, Prime Videos, Disney Hotstar, Sony Live and they all worked without any problem. The TV supports Dolby Vision and HDR10. I tested them on Hotstar and Prime Videos. Both played well. 
However, the content available is not as much, but growing, especially Dolby Vision on Netflix and Hotstar. Also tested set-top box channels and they look really, really nice. The detail, the crispness, the clarity is very good. However, I would recommend you have an HD setup box for the best viewing experience. HD channels are also pretty viewable. The upscaling of low resolution channels was also above average. Alright, let's talk about the sound. So it comes with 30 watt 6 speaker setup, 4 full range speakers and 2 tweeters. It's probably one of the most underrated feature of the Mi QLED TV. One of the best sounding TV speakers I've heard in a very long time. And trust me, I've heard many. So there is a difference between loud thumping sound and good audio fidelity. The Mi QLED TV comes in the latter category. The audio sounds clear, crisp and rich. The bass is also very well tuned and you can feel the music. It sounds much better than most TVs that have built in soundbars. Trust me. For most users, the sound would be more than sufficient to enjoy a good viewing experience. Yes, it was amazing. Now I know many of you want to know, is it better than an external soundbar with a dedicated subwoofer? Probably not. That might be better because of the external bass. Even though most budget soundbars lack good audio fidelity, it's just the way we look at it. Better bass means better sound, which is actually not true at all. Balanced good audio with good quality drivers will always make for a more pleasant sound experience. The only thing this TV lacks is the Dolby Atmos support. If that was there, it would be almost perfect. Now Xiaomi was spot on when they said they are future proofing the TV. We have 32 GB internal storage, so clearly you aren't gonna fall short of space anytime soon. Out of 32 GB, you get 27 GB usable, which is more than enough compared to the 4.5 GB we would get with 8 GB internal storage TVs. Now all HDMI ports are HDMI 2.1. Now that's a little debatable. Yes, it's faster transfer speeds compared to HDMI 2.0. But the Mi QLED TV has a 4K resolution panel that supports 60Hz refresh rate. So HDMI 2.1 doesn't really help. Even HDMI 2.0 is capable of playing 4K videos at 60fps. So this upgrade is good, but kind of useless. It has 60 millisecond input lag for a 4K video at 60Hz and also audio low latency mode, which gets enabled when you plug in a gaming console. I tested it briefly and it was really good. I would like to do a full gaming review later but easily I can say that this device is really good for casual gaming. Then the Mi QLED TV is running the latest Android TV 10 OS. Not the first, but surely one of the early ones to adapt. And who doesn't want the latest OS? Also an interface that no other TV apart from Xiaomi has. The Patchwall interface. Amazing. Gorgeous looking content to watch from many OTT platforms. It's an experience like no other TV ever. The Mi Quick Wake also makes a comeback from the Horizon Edition. Press the power button to turn off. Press it again and the device will wake up in under 5 seconds. Very convenient. Miracast comes pre-installed so you can mirror your Android phone without having a dedicated Wi-Fi connection. Simply turn on Miracast on your TV. Look for the cast option or screen sharing on your Android phone. You'll see the name of your TV. Click and your phone is mirrored in a couple of seconds. It works really smooth, almost lag free. Even if you mirror videos from your phone, they play quite well. I'm sure many are going to use this feature. We also got the mute feature on the remote, double press the volume down button and it will mute the TV. However, I still preferred a dedicated button. Anyway, it's much better than not having one. So finally, should you buy the Mi QLED TV? Well, it's not perfect. And I've said this before, no TV is. But Xiaomi got most of the things right. A gorgeous display, impressive build quality, ample of storage, excellent sound, and all the apps you need. It's a complete package. If you are thinking you can get a regular 55 inch LED TV for 40,000, and this is for 50,000, is it worth the difference? I have two words for you. Absolutely yes. It's going to make everyone happy. Trust me. I'll leave the links below in the description. If you like to buy one, you should definitely check it out. So I hope this video was helpful. If there are any questions, mention it down in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Until next time, cheers.